He would not compromise. He would not compromise. So think about that for a moment. Think about that word compromise. I'm sure you've heard teachings and sermons on compromise. Please listen. Ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you. This is a problem for many Christians today. Compromise is a serious problem. And we do not resolve in our hearts to not compromise. And so what happens? The moment comes the temptation comes, and what do we do? We make a deal. We make a deal. We're like, well, I don't agree with the world, but I'll make a deal with you, and we compromise. A compromised Christian is one who will not take risks for the sake of their holiness, but will look for loopholes in order to keep one foot in the church and one foot in the world. A compromising Christian is one who will not take risks for the sake of their holiness, but will look for loopholes in order to keep one foot in the church and one foot in the world. Does that make sense? You're looking for loopholes. If you want to know whether you're a compromising Christian, then you're one who's looking for ways around the things that are sure and true that God has said, this is not for you. This is not for my people. This is not holy. This is not pure. This is not right. Well, can I, well, what if I just did this? Well, what if I did this? And you're looking for ways around it rather than the resolve to stand on the holiness of God and the righteousness of his word. And the interesting thing about this is that most of the time, this is something that you as an individual Christian has to know yourself as you seek God. There are areas that you will compromise in if you do a certain thing that may not be the same for the person next to you. You need to be someone who seeks the Lord, seeks after his word to know what he requires of you and asks of you. And then you will know, God will teach you, he will speak to you, what are those areas of compromise. The one who compromises is not the way of a Christian, but a person who has yet to surrender to the lordship of Christ. One thing I love about Daniel is you get the the sense that he was under the lordship of God. There, face to face, with another king and another ruler of great, great influence, and he did not surrender, and he did not compromise. Isn't that inspiring, church? Isn't that inspiring? We should be inspired by Daniel. We, we, we say often the ultimate inspiration is Jesus Christ, right? And we will get to that at the end of this sermon. We'll see how does this wrap into the gospel and into our relationship with Christ. But this is inspiring. Daniel stood his ground. He resolved, I will not eat of the king's food. I will not compromise. Charles Spurgeon said this, Daniel and his friends knew this would cost them something, yet they were willing. Be ready for a bad name. Be willing to be called a bigot. Be prepared for the loss of friendships. Be prepared for anything so long as you can stand fast by him who bought you with his precious blood. Be willing, church.